Hi, I'm Jeff Gonzalez, president of Trident Concept. And today I'm here with Brownell's Daily Defense to talk to you about truck guns. So what is a truck gun? Well, it's not just the gun that you keep in a truck. You can pretty much store these in any type of vehicle. So we just use the term truck gun to kind of help put the picture in your head. The first thing that we talk about is going to be, what is the mission of a truck gun? And this is where folks can sometimes get a little bit too far off into the weeds on this. Uh, it's designed originally as a, as a, as a response to a, a critical incident. But the reality is that you're probably not going to be able to justify leaving the critical incident to retrieve the firearm to get back in the critical incident. Plus, it's probably going to be a time-sensitive issue, may not be valuable. That doesn't mean that we don't necessarily want to have a truck gun. It just means that the reality of you using one, probably pretty low. So let's talk about what would go into making a truck gun. Well, the first question we have to talk about is caliber. Do we want to go with a rifle cartridge or would we rather go with a pistol cartridge? They both are going to have pros and cons. The one thing that you're going to probably identify as a truck gun is they will both be short barrels. So whether it's a rifle cartridge or a pistol cartridge, they're going to be short barrels. So you kind of negate some of the advantages of a rifle cartridge when you go down to those shorter barrels. Once you've made your choice on which cartridge caliber you're going to go with, the next thing is to talk about size and weight. And this is where you kind of run into some of those, those kind of options, those decisions that you have to make. Um, the big thing is size. Most of these rifles, even as a short barrel rifle, are still going to have an overall length that's pretty substantial. So what do you do to manage that size? Well, one of the things that you can do is you can actually um, employ a folding stock and then to actually get to that short barrel rifle configuration without having to go through the paperwork, you can utilize a pistol brace. When you add those two together, it makes for a really good combination. So here I have the folding stock and then I have the pistol brace. This makes for a nice sized compact package that allows me to store this in a non-discrete bag. So once it's folded, it's actually a pretty small package. I don't have to worry so much about the size of my bag being in a sense, overt about what might be inside the bag. So once I have kind of gotten that size shrunk down, that's also going to shrink down or lighten up the weight. And at some point, weight is gonna be an issue. The key thing is that both of those variables, size and weight, are tied together. I want to have the smallest size with still maintaining the effectiveness of what I'm trying to achieve, my needs, but I also want it to be as light a package as I can possibly get it. That brings us up to storage. Key thing is that when I'm storing this, I need to store it in a nondescript bag, a bag that is not gonna draw attention. And in fact, we'll do just the opposite, a gloss or glance over. Because if it draws attention to the bag, it's more than likely going to draw attention to the contents. Now, here's the thing, whether it's a a discrete bag or whether it's a bag that might give away the fact that there could be something in there. A common thing that we might see are instrument cases being used. And of course, if it's inside of an instrument case, well, you may not recognize that it is a rifle. But if you think about an instrument, most instruments are fairly costly. So somebody that's looking to try to gain something valuable would probably recognize the instrument case and not realize there's a gun in there, but think that there's actually something of value. And that's the point. We want to try to use something that's a little bit more discreet and nondescript. From there, we talk about security and how do we secure the, the, the truck gun inside of that discreet bag? Well, my recommendation is that it has to be out of plain view. It's got to be hidden inside of your trunk space or some sort of some sort of area that is not visible to anybody outside of the vehicle. And the primary reason behind this is to reduce the number of vehicle thefts that are occurring. Vehicle thefts are on, on a rise. And unfortunately, what we are doing is that we potentially could be outfitting the criminal element. Biggest thing that we have to recognize is that we are responsible gun owners. So whether or not it's the right thing to do to secure your firearm is gonna be something that you need to make a choice about. From there, we talk about the deployment sequence, and we will have to at least practice trying to deploy that firearm from inside the bag. It's not like we're going to have to do it in a manner that is an immediate threat, because that's probably gonna be something that you would solve with your handgun. But we do still want to work at defeating whatever discrete bag I have to gain access 
to deploy, to charge, then to be able to get that firearm into action. Which brings us up to how do I stow the firearm? Well, we recommend that you not stow in condition one, which means a live round in the chamber. Whether there's a, lot, a magazine with loaded rounds in it is one thing, but definitely not in the chamber. We want to make sure that we have secured that firearm in a safe condition. So if a truck gun fits your needs, great. Consider all these variables and options and try to select the best ones to fit your needs. If not, it's just good information for you to have. Whatever the case, we'd love to hear your questions or comments. Please feel free to post them down below. Until then, take care and stay safe.